Now, the four goals that you're going to see for Bly Spartans here is just... It's got non-league written all over it. We can see a cross into there. And even it's raining and it's England. And everybody loves non-league football, don't they? It's so beautiful. It's so raw. And in Football Manager, some people find it very entertaining to manage in lower league. Me, it's not for me. I admit that. I very rarely do I do non-league football. However, I understand that a lot of you do. There's the fourth look. Beautiful completely a non-league goal. And a lot of the comments that I get when I'm doing the tactic videos or even rebuilds is a lot of you are playing non-league football, lower league football at the very least, and a lot of these tactics might not work for you. So I, I understand and I see that, and that's why I'm doing this video. You see, I gave Ryan Cassidy, a great tactician of Football Manager Tactics, a challenge to find me and create a lower league or non-league tactic for you guys to try and use. For everybody who enjoys using lower league football or non-league football, who struggle tactically in creating a tactic for those leagues. And that is why we have come up with this. However, it's very different to how I usually look at and test tactics. You see, what Ryan has basically done is he's created three versions of the same tactic for three different scenarios. Now I'll put the link down below to download these three tactics, but what I need to explain to you is the different scenarios for each one that Ryan told me he was using. And this isn't just simulated throughout the whole year because I understand some people don't believe in that, how the tactic works. This is Ryan playing the game raw throughout the whole season using these three tactics. It's the best way to test the tactic. It's just very time consuming. And that's why Ryan's gone through and done it because he's also done it at another team in the Vanarama National League. We'll take a look at that in a sec. But with Blythe Spartans, who if we briefly gloss over their media prediction of 18th, he managed to win the league with this very comfortably, might I add, 91 points only losing three games. Now that is a massive achievement for somebody like Blythe Spartans. And I mean, Lewis McNeil, they're getting 33 goals. You'll see a lot of Lewis McNeil goals in the highlights. If we went through the schedule here, you can see his name pop up a lot, especially. I mean, let's take a look at this for a sec. How long he goes without actually losing a game? I mean, this what these are two cup games. That doesn't even count. In the league itself, the National League North, he went from October all the way down until pretty much when the league was won in April. He went unbeaten that whole time in the league. And yes, there is a few draws in here, but look how many wins there are without even conceding a goal. And that is because one of the three setups that we have here is a defensive one. Now, just to prove to you that it is defensive, we can see here it's the Mariners' defence that he has named this. And that is because the different instructions that we have here, the shape stays pretty much the same. Some player instructions will change, but the team instructions is what is different. For instance, on the main tactic, which is just a standard positive tactic to mainly start off against majority of the teams in your league, we can see it's, it's fairly bog standard. It's what makes the non-league side of it very good. You're playing with players who aren't very good. They don't have the best attributes. You're playing to the strengths of those clubs. But if we go to the defensive one, it is similar. However, things like time wasting is selected in transition. It's slightly different. You're slowing the pace down, taking shorter kicks. All of these instructions in the defensive one also brings the intensity down, which obviously means that your players who don't have the best natural fitness and stamina in the lower leagues or the non-league leagues, you're going to benefit from that because of course, if you're playing a certain amount of games throughout the season, you're going to have to have a big squad. Lowering the intensity means less injuries, and your players will be fit for the next game. That is obviously really important. Now, let me give you an example of where you would use that defensive tactic. Not necessarily when you are winning the game by the scruff of your neck and you're, you're basically battling towards the end, but when you maybe need to take your foot off the pedal and still guarantee yourself a win. Here we have a game against Kettering Town. Now, Kettering, unfortunately for them, had a player sent off in the seventh minute. We then scored in the 15th minute and right before half time. To me, I'm against 10 men. They're not playing very well. We are playing very well. At half time, I'd be changing to the defensive tactic, kind of save a few legs and just hope that 
you're not really going to be under any threat from a 10-man Keter in town. You're already 2-0 up. They should be thinking about the next game already as well. Because if we do take a look at match statistics, they are dominating as well. 22 shots, 10 on target. Now, I don't necessarily know what Ryan decided to do throughout this match, but I'm just giving you a brief scenario of my wavelength. And obviously, we scored in the 68th minute. If you get 3-0 up, then absolutely go to the defensive tactic and save the legs because you don't really need to worry about the intensity of pressing and things like that. I mean, to be honest, the intensity is not that high on the main tactic itself. But for lower league, where natural fitness and stamina is not all that good, this is probably a great way to go. Now, you will have noticed, of course, there is a third tactic. This one is an attacking tactic. This one is when you need a goal. Maybe you're coming towards the end of the game and you cannot believe your team hasn't scored yet. This could be the tactic to go to. Or you're 1-0 down. 2-1 down, you're chasing a goal. This is when you plug in the attacking style. And you can see the intensity has already increased. The mentality has gone up to an attack and I'm sure some uh, play instructions has changed. We now shoot on sight. We hit early crosses. We're trying to get the ball into the box as mu much as possible. Extremely high tempo from a standard or slightly higher tempo than what it was previously. We are now extremely high, running up the defense and being more expressive. You're trying to get as many opportunities on the goal as you possibly can. You're also wide attacking width as well. And in transition, you're distributing the ball to the flanks with short kicks. You're trying to start attacks early, quickly, quickly. That's exactly what you're trying to do. And out of possession, that's when you're pressing much higher and your higher defensive line. You're getting stuck in much more trigger press. Everything intensifies when you plug in the attacking tactic. Because if we do go back to the main style of tactic, which I do kind of suggest starting majority of the games with, unless, of course, you're against a far superior team, maybe you want to plug in the defensive one for that and give that a try. Or you need to give your players a bit of a rest because the intensity obviously does drop. If you start off with the main tactic that we have here, the positive mentality we can see, yes, it's, you're still attacking with width, but you're focusing the play down the wings, only running up defense. The tempo is only slightly higher. You're only distributing the ball to the full bats because you're not worried too much about getting the ball as far up the pitch as quickly as possible. You're more than happy to kind of build up the play rather than intensely getting it to the wingers to attack with early crosses. And out of possession, you only have a standard line of engagement and a standard defensive line. You're not forcing the play all the way at the top of the pitch like the attacking one suggests. You're using the offside trap as well and your trigger press is only more often you're not let's constantly bombard them as soon as they get the ball and you're forcing the play outside as well so let's go through the play instructions because i know a lot of you are maybe on xbox or you cannot download tactics so you want to see the actual player instructions themselves and you want to see the instructions that we have laid out here as well as obviously the player roles now we can see here there are a few instructions that you need to take uh, a look at take fewer risks for instance on this ball winning midfielder dribble less the center midfielder take more risk of course uh, we are on the wingers we got to uh, cross and aim at the center sometimes I like to do it at far post I've noticed far post works quite well but obviously roaming from positions things like that aren't usually selected for the wingers fullbacks on support a no-nonsense center back very non-league, very, very non-league and next to a centre defender as well, taking Furious, the other fullback on the other side. And we, of course, have a sweeper keeper. Now, on the attacking one, you won't see too much of a change in the player instructions, mainly because, of course, it is down to the team instructions that you're going to see a vast difference in the way your team plays. The player roles pretty much stay the same, and I think that kind of works out quite well with your tactical familiarity. Of course, on the defensive side of things, will we see anything different to ease in our tackles there, whether that's the same as well. But what we can suggest is that it's all or down to the tempo and your tactical familiarity why this tactic will work on three different stages. However, there is a kick of yours because Ryan Cassidy stands by opposition instructions. Myself, I, to be honest, I'm too lazy to use them or I just worry that I'm doing something wrong. So what you can see here is a basic understanding of what Ryan Cassidy does for his opposition instructions. So if you were to plug this in every single game, you go to opposition instructions, you select this. When you go into your game, you then go to opposition instructions and you select the button which does it for every single one that you just, it basically just inserts 
all of this data into whatever formation your opposition is playing. I hope you understand that. I would go into a game, but I think it's at the end of the season, so I can't really show you that. But that's basically how it works. So what it's instructing you to do, show the players onto their weaker foot. Of course, if you're in non-league, you're gonna find a lot of players are very one-footed. The trigger press, which is obviously goes along with your instructions, tighten marking in certain positions and tackling harder on the defense and not tackling harder in positions where you're likely to give away some penalties or dangerous free kicks. So with Blythe Spartans, of course, we won the league, but with Chesterfield in the Vanarama National League, seventh media predicted, they also won the league. It's a great tactic, viewers, especially for non-league or lower league management. They won the league with 90 points. So they've managed to outdo the rest of the league and promote themselves automatically. Now, if we take a look at the schedule, it's not like the unbeaten run that we had at Blythe Spartans, but we're still getting a lot of greens, especially towards this end of the season here. How many games we won in a row using these tactics, which kind of guaranteed us to win the league in the long run. And I wanna, what I basically want to end this on is past positions we can see once we got to the top, we had a small drop off down into third, back up into the top towards the end of the season. That's where we won the league. So if you could, viewers, I really appreciate you pressing the like button on this video. It really helps it go out across the YouTube algorithm for more people to discover it. Helps my channel. Helps me get to 30,000 subscribers. Hope you're subscribed. Please do if you can. That'll be great. Like I said, links downloadable in the description if you want to get all three of these tactics uh, by Ryan Cassidy. Thank you once again to Ryan Cassidy. And viewers, I'll see you on the next one for another video. Bye-bye.